Hello and welcome to Thought for August the 6th. Our readings are 2 Samuel chapter 24, Jeremiah chapter 27, and Mark chapter 1. And our thought is the anger of the Lord. The final chapter in 2 Samuel begins by telling us again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. We are not told why God was angry with his people. There is no indication that it was comparable with his anger in the days of Jeremiah when the final result was that the temple and the city was destroyed. But we are given several accounts of how badly the people were behaving in Jeremiah's time. We conclude that it was the outcome of so many people being ready to rally around Absalom and being ready to go to war against David and his faithful men. These did not appreciate the conquest and success of David in totally subduing the Philistines and other nations. We ponder the verse which goes on to say that the Lord incited David against them, saying, Go, number Israel and Judah. When Joab has reluctantly carried out David's request, and has completed the numbering of valiant men who drew the sword, we read in verse 9. David's heart struck him after he had numbered the people, we read. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. I have acted very foolishly, verse 10. David knew from past experience that the Lord can save by many or by few, First Samuel 14, verse 6. As his dear friend Jonathan had said and experienced, it is better by few because then it is more evident that victory has not been achieved by man's own strength. Our conclusion of the meaning behind the phrase that the Lord incited David is that it means the Lord allowed David to follow his own foolish desires. There is a proverb which says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Proverbs 16 verse 9. And another, the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. In this case, it serves the Lord's purpose to allow David to follow his desires. The result taught David a lesson and at the same time resulted in the deserved punishment of the people. In that sense, God became a Satan, as the parallel account in 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 tells us. This should not surprise us too much, as the first occurrence of the Hebrew word Satan in the Bible describes the action of an angel from God in being an adversary to Balaam, we read in Numbers 22 and verse 22. Indeed, the Hebrew word Satan, or Santanus, is many times translated as adversary in the Old Testament and names those who are adversaries, for example, Satan's to Solomon at the end of his reign, 1 Kings 11, verses 14, 23 and 25. In the same sense, Peter became a Satan, that is, an adversary to Jesus, as we will read shortly in Mark chapter 8, verse 33. Let us not become a Satan. Let us know and do the will of our Heavenly Father as much as we can, so that the anger of the Lord is not kindled against us, as it will be against so many as Jesus returns. Well, thank you once again for joining us for Thought for the Day, where together we can open up the pages of God's Word remembering that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path.